presentation. The job is unprecedented. Imagine a construction project that's 500 feet in the air. A hundred million dollar makeover on the symbol of Seattle. This was not just painting the walls and saying, okay, we've upgraded. Tonight, see how the Space Needle was reborn from the people who shaped it to the ones who made it with exclusive behind the scenes access and rare never before broadcast footage. Everything we did was first ever only or never imagined before. From its historic beginnings to its new view into the future, you'll see this landmark in a whole new light as King 5's evening presents Space Needle, remaking an icon. Good evening. When it was announced in 2017 that the Space Needle would undergo a $100 million makeover, the news was met with both excitement and a little bit of trepidation. After all, making changes to what most people consider the symbol of Seattle is something that no one took lightly. The Needle has been a part of Seattle's skyline and our memories for over 55 years, but new memories are about to be made. We spent the last year putting this show together so you can meet the people and see the work that went into transforming this landmark for the next century. But before we peer into the Needle's future, let's take a look back at how it all started. It was designed with an eye on the future, but when the Space Needle was introduced as the centerpiece of the 1962 World's Fair in Seattle, it was already behind. When they unveiled the plan, they didn't have permits, they didn't have funding, they didn't know the exact location. I mean, they just had a piece of paper with an idea on it and they had to move that. You can imagine, I mean, now if you remodel your bathroom, it could take two years. Despite its late start, city and business leaders came together to make sure it would be completed on time. They broke ground in April, they dug down 30 feet, and in May of 1961, they did what was the largest continuous concrete pour in the West. They had something like 467 cement trucks in a single day came just pouring the foundation of the Space Needle. But it was above ground that presented the biggest challenge. The project called for steel and lots of it. Iron workers from around the area gladly threw their hard hats into the ring for the chance to work on this once in a lifetime job. Back when they built the Space Needle in 61, 62, they had the best of the best, the best iron workers, the best steel workers, because everyone wanted to work on the Space Needle. Even the precarious heights didn't sway the workers from their jobs. They had no nets, no <laughs> harnesses. They crawled way out there, I and mean, they were extraordinarily brave. The iron workers did not lose one day, probably not even one hour, to injury. This is April 21st, opening day of the exposition, which has been in preparation for seven years. 400 days after construction began, the tallest structure west of the Mississippi opened for the World's Fair. Hi, now that you're in, what do you expect to see? I expect to see the needle. Visitors waited hours in line for their chance to get to the top. When you got up to the observation deck, you walked out, it was wide open. It was kind of like a crow's nest. There wasn't any glass, there was uh, no enclosure. And so you really felt like you were out in the open. You felt like you were flying. Though the Space Needle was both a critical and commercial success, original architects believe if they had more time, they could have made it even better. There's no question that the design had to accommodate the time frame. So they did make some compromises uh, as they went along. It was addressing those compromises as well as upgrading systems long past their prime. We're gonna take out the pony wall, take out the metal cage. That led the needle to announce the largest renovation in its history. We call it the Century Project because we wanna be as relevant in 2062 as the day we opened in 1962. For us, thinking about the space, you know, like, why is it there? It's a flying saucer on a stick. It's like, what's possible? Let's do this. And it's really meant to be like, hey, this is innovation, the latest technology, and truly that thrilling view. This is the railing that wraps around down all the way to the glass floor. To help shape the future of the icon, the Space Needle Corporation enlisted the help of renowned Seattle architectural firm, Olson Kundig. 
And Olson Clinic does cultural projects around the world, so that is, is kind of where we go, but there is no project like the Space Needle. There's no construction, no technical challenge, but also no design challenge that certainly has ever come along in my career. Their ideas for the needle? Addition by subtraction. What if we take that wall away? What if we make those windows bigger? What if we take the guardrails away and actually make those glass? What if we take the floor away and make the world's first rotating glass floor? Allen and his team worked for years with historians and the Seattle Landmark Preservation Board to make sure the changes they proposed wouldn't affect the needle's protected exterior. But the interior was fair game. It's been remodeled many, many times over the decades. I mean, it's 56 years since the building was created. We almost took more away and cleared the, cleared the decks, frankly, than we added. But I do think that the original architects wanted people to come up and view this city and this growing city against this extraordinary natural landscape. Once the plans got the green light, it was time to hand them off to those who would make them a reality. Imagine a construction project that's 500 feet in the air. It's like an island in outer space. How you get things there, how you deliver them, and all of the technical challenges associated with that. 114. Those challenges and the construction itself was overseen by Hoffman Construction, who turned the Needles skyline level into their on-site headquarters in the sky. Having built places like the Museum of Pop Culture and the Central Library in downtown Seattle, Hoffman is no stranger to working on unconventional projects, but everyone here knows this job is extra special. You can tell the Space Needle was very important to Seattle. There is emotion here for the Space Needle, and I haven't had anybody who's been upset that we're touching it. It seems like people are, okay, that's fine, and thank you for keeping an eye on it for us, and I just tell them, you're welcome. Before the work begins, there is one big question that needs answering. How do we provide a safe place for people to work and not to feel as if they are 500 feet in the air and worry about being right next to the edge all the time? There were different methods that were reviewed and it became where, gee, maybe we can lift something up from the bottom and hold it in place. That something is a 28,000 pound platform that's to be hoisted up and connected to the bottom of the needle's top house. It was certainly something that hadn't been done by us before, by our scaffold contractor before, really by anyone I think before in that fashion. While the city sleeps, the platform slowly rises, but it isn't just wood planks being lifted into the air. There were 12 people on there that entire time, too. There was a person on each one of the hoist motors, you know, managing the motor and then managing the electrical cords that went with each motor. The completed scaffolding will be 44,000 square feet and provide a safe environment to work on. To see it go up like that was really incredible and all the efforts of all the folks that put that together and made it happen safely and successfully. But the biggest work is yet to come. The glass floor didn't come out as an idea initially. The game-changing redesign that will transform the needle forever. That's up next when the Space Needle Remaking an Icon returns. <laughs>